Welcome into Folsom Field, beautiful Boulder, Colorado, University of Colorado football. It's the Radio 1190 pregame show. I'm Joe Paris alongside Andrew Hopner. Andrew, a big game for the Buffs today, the home opener against the Massachusetts Minutemen. Implications here are huge, Joe. After taking one on the chin last week in Hawaii, it's going to be pretty tough for Colorado to come back, prove to the fans that this is a season where it's really worth coming to the stadium. There were some season ticket numbers, uh, student attendance numbers that people were kind of worried about in the midweek, but it's a beautiful day here in Boulder, so I'm sure a lot of people will turn up. Should be a Buffalo's victory, too, so it gonna be a, it's going to be a pretty good day. It's a noon start time to take on Massachusetts. If the fans show up, that's great, but aside from that, the Buffs have to show up on the field. They lose 28-20 to 20 to uh, Hawaii last week. A very ugly game. Andrew, what has to be different this week for the Buffs? Well, defensively, it really comes down to Kenneth Crawley. He had a nightmare of a game against Marcus Kemp. Kemp went six receptions, 116 yards, and a touchdown on him the last time they played. Now he comes in, talking some smack to Rashard Higgins from CSU. This is his game where he comes back and he proves that he should be on that starting side opposite Chidobi Awuzie. On the offensive side, it comes down to Sefo Lufau and this guy, Nelson Spruce, number 22. He had a pretty quiet game against Hawaii, only eight receptions, 69 yards, no scores. It's gonna really going to be, can he be the All-American wide receiver, the preseason All-American that everyone thinks he is, the guy that was hyped up so much in this preseason. I think really the Cepho Nelson connection is going to be a big part of it and whether or not they can stay with the running game. Mike Lackins had a great game, 22 rushes, 90 yards, two scores last game. They stopped going to him in the second half. So the play calling is going to be definitely under a microscope after a terrible throwing from Brian Lindgren last week. Michael Atkins, the second, was one of the lone bright spots last week. He had two first-half touchdowns, but Andrew, what's the formula for success for the Colorado offense? Well, it, it's, as I said, play calling is the big thing. Offensive coordinator Brian Lindgren, good young OC, awful called an awful game against Hawaii, Joe. So it's going to come down to the diversity of their plays, whether or not they can balance their run-pass game, ride the hot hands, but not run them into oblivion. You know, you want to make sure that if you have a good running game in Michael Atkins, you go to him, but you don't go to him so much that all of a sudden it's obvious that you're just playing run, 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 run. If you go run, run, pass, 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 run, run, pass, run, you have to be really diverse in your play calling. And if Lindgren can do that today against a Massachusetts team that really has never showed much on defense, then they should be okay. I'm, I'm thinking that that will probably be the biggest key is diversity in the play calling. And unfortunately for the players like Cepho and Nelson Spruce, that's totally out of their hands. Colorado had some issues on the Special teams last week, and Andrew, that was a huge difference. Colorado turning the ball over, over and over. It looked reminiscent of two years ago and Coach Mack's first year, but what's the bottom line today for the special teams? You know, Do you think they maybe came out too tight against uh, Hawaii? I think it just came. I, I think it might have been tightness. It might have been nerves. There's two big words that Colorado special teams needs to think about before they go out on the field every single play today. Be smart. Don't make boneheaded plays like Shea Fields did last week, called poison on a punt, opted to go and grab it, ended up fumbling it, that went back into Hawaii's hands. Alex Kinney had a horrible uh, punting game. Diego Gonzalez was the little bright spot at the kicker, but it's all about being smart, knowing where your blocks are, knowing where your reads are, knowing that if you call poison on a punt, you call boys on the button, you run away from the thing. It comes down to just football intelligence, and I know that this is a team that has a lot of it. They just need to fill in the cracks. This is a good test, because before all of the glitz and glamour that the Rocky Mountain Showdown provides, you have had a gut check against Hawaii. This is where you get your mojo back. In the shadow of the Champion Center, Colorado will take on the Massachusetts Minutemen here today. Andrew, the new facility is beautiful. The fans finally get to come to Folsom and check out what it's about. And you know, I can't say I'm disappointed. An incredible facility at Folsom. It really is, Joe. And if you look behind us, we actually do have the rooftop terrace open for the first time. And this is really the turning point of CU football. And there's a little bit of pressure on CU today because Rick George is opening this up to the public. He's bringing in donors, people who want to come to this new facility and see Colorado win. So the Buffaloes have a big reputation that that facility has just created to live up to. Hopefully they'll be able to do it and start to usher Colorado into this new area. You have new facilities, new uniforms, a lot of hype. It took a bit of a hit against Hawaii, but I think they should be able to pull it off today.
kickoff is just around the corner. Thanks for tuning in to the Radio 1190 pregame show alongside Andrew Hopner. I'm Joe Paris. Again, Colorado takes on the UMass Minutemen here at Folsom Field at 12 noon. You can catch that on the Pac-12 network or on Radio 850 KOA. Andrew should be a fun one. We'll talk to you guys soon.